In this video, we're just going to kind of uh, demonstrate some properties of integers. And these, uh, for the most part, also apply to the whole numbers, or at least for the first one. Whole numbers don't have negative numbers, and so 2 and 3 are not going to be applicable to the whole numbers. All right, but we do have this thing called the additive identity. And in uh, the additive identity for, well, for numbers that you and I work with every day is zero. And so if you want add zero to any number, it doesn't change the number. Normally in math, uh, we typically uh, do these in all numbers at once. And so we're just going to go ahead and say the number A, whatever number you happen to be working with, if you add zero to that, it doesn't change the value. It doesn't go anywhere. Okay, a hard example is negative 9 plus 0 is still negative 9. Alright, that's just the additive identity. In this case, the number is 0. The additive inverse is new to the integers. And now the additive inverse is the opposite of a number. So suppose you have a number like 5. Its additive inverse is negative 5. And now, the reason is it's additive inverse is because when you add them, you get the identity, zero. So, in general terms, if you take a number, doesn't matter whether the number is positive or negative, and you add its opposite, you get zero. Okay, and that's, so that applies. It applies to any number. If a was negative 3, and that kind of brings in this, this number 3. Let's go ahead and do number 3, and we'll come back and we'll, we'll take a look at this another um, example to number 2. Number 3, the opposite of a negative is a positive. Okay, and so this is illustrated by the, the opposite of negative a is a. Uh, I kind of explain this in English terms. Uh, and for other languages, I can't really speak to it since I, I only took one year of Latin in high school. Uh, but in English, we have these these really nasty things called double negatives. Uh, for example, I like to stand up and then have all my students stand up and tell them to don't not sit in the chair. And that really confuses them because in English, we don't like to have double negatives. So saying not, not. So don't, do not not sit in a chair. Well, if you not sit in a chair, you stand. If you don't not sit in a chair, you sit. And that is really confusing. Math doesn't really like it either. And so we have come up with ways to say, rather than using a double negative, just go ahead and use the positive of it. And that's what this illustrates. When you take the negative of a negative number, you're really going to come up with the negative or the the number itself. Now you have to be very careful on this because a itself could be negative, and so you'd have three negatives. Let me demonstrate both number two and number three working together. All right, so let's say that we have um, negative five plus the negative of negative five. Notice that negative 5 is our a, and so we're saying take the negative of negative 5. All right, now, according to number 3, though, okay, so according to number 3, this thing here is actually the opposite of negative 5, which is just positive 5. And so negative 5 plus 5 then is 0. And so you kind of see how this opposite, the opposite, or the, the negative of the opposite, or the opposite of the negative, any way you want to say those things, you can see how it comes out to be the positive. Okay, and you always, as with um, order of operations, as with order of operations, you always work from the inside out. And so if you happen to have three of these signs, make sure that you're always working from the inside out with them.